hello and welcome in this particular video we are starting off lectures on paper 2 anthropology as there there is a lot of material which is available for paper 1 but here we'll start with paper 2 and we'll uh, try to finish it within a month uh, these will uh, be like the normal classes paper and pen based so i would like you to take your uh, books as well as notes out and I, I'll publish this course only when I'll finish the paper 2's part A or section A. So you will have a complete notes for paper 2 section A. So we are starting 1.1 which is evolution of Indian culture and civilization. So here as we are dealing right now. Evolution and of Indian culture and civilization. Indian culture is not restricted to only one uh, religion or anything and it is a melting ball for many races, cultures and civilizations. So before starting this topic, uh, history is something that we divide into two parts where first is prehistory where there is no written document available and for proto-history there is written document which is available but we do not have deciphered them yet in pre historic culture there is no writing the community is preliterate and no written records are available proto history is between history and prehistory where there is the availability of written document but the script is not deciphered yet now we'll talk about the very important topic which is oral history oral history refers to the study of history of contemporary society who are preliterate any possibility of written record is called is recalled out scholars like william robertson so these this is the name of first scholar which will which we have seen in paper 2 section 1 so William Robertson in the year 1777 tried to study the human evolution before the evolutionist and he used the terms like savagery, barbarism and civilization. As far as these three terms are concerned we will be dealing with them separately when we will start our paper 1. Now we'll start with very, there are few writers, few scholars whose names are, are important and as far as this particular thing is concerned, the name of writer or the scholars is very important as far as the answers are concerned. So here we'll write down the name Putman. in 1851 attempted to system uh, systematic study of past culture under the domain of prehistory and it was who he who explained the meaning of prehistory as a domain of knowledge beyond history dealing with human past beyond the history so putman was the first one probably the first one or amongst the first one who attempted the systematic study who attempted the systematic study of past culture so this is the name of our first scholar second we'll talk about Lubbock in the year 1865 in the year 1865 we examined the evidences of different prehistoric culture and classified them into two broad categories. So Lubbock, he analyzed, he examined the prehistoric culture. He examined the prehistoric culture and then he divided them into Paleolithic and Neolithic.
the focus of study so we'll focus of study we'll talk about the focus of study right the focus of study in this the first point is prehistory attempts to study the sequence so here there is a study of sequence of prehistoric occupation in an area so there is a study of occupation sequence that first settlement and second is livelihood so prehistory attempt to study the sequence of prehistoric occupation in area which we can write down as settlements and livelihood it focuses on origin and spread so it also focuses on origin and spread next point is they focus on the lifestyle of prehistoric population in given period of time so they also talk about the lifestyle and the last point here is prehistorian tried to arrive at same points axioms some laws that could be used to study the socio cultural evolution of the prehistoric community so they talk about socio cultural evolution of certain community these broad focuses lead to the following specific study so the four broad specifics that we talked about they led, uh, led to the study in a specific way so they study the occupation occupational flows to find out the nature of the livelihood so now they focused more on occupational floors and find out the nature of livelihood you also come across industries or sites of tool making in the industry you will come across specific type of tools which were made by specific technique these are the techniques that we will be talking about when uh, we'll extensively start with the archaeology and uh, there there will be various methods of tool flecking etc so study of the tool type and tool technique is another specific point the mechanism of food production were studied it could be a hunting culture pastoral culture agricultural based culture so it can be it simply could be hunting pastoral or agricultural society the environmental conditions were also studied like age of the ice temperature floor and leading to different environmental conditions like grassland etc these are cultural remains in items of material culture such as rock painting cave painting presence of pit structure of house floor design settlement pattern these material culture is outside the study of floors and technique so we'll write down the few like rock painting rock paintings cave painting pit houses floors and settlement patterns settlement patterns these materials these are the cultural materials which are used for the study of tool and technique they also study in specific detail urbanization which is reflected in town planning settlement pattern cities grown size 
creation of non producing class or group they also studied how emergence of surplus has given rise to the formation of state and the state formation and surplus management in another important dimension so with the urbanization there will be the problems or kind of modern uh, ways of dealing the situation so there will be state there will be production of surplus the surplus will have to be managed well and the management comes at the last comes the distribution so these were some of the areas which were studied now we will talk about the new area which is the tool types start with the new topic that is we'll start with the tool type now some of the prehistoric tools are called as core tool while the others are called as flake tool what are the core tools and what are the flake tools we will study in deep here boulders boulders they are simply stone pebbles they are simply stone pebbles so if anything comes regarding this the simple at simple at the most easy way boulders are stone pebbles so we'll start with few diagrams this is core hammer strike hammer strike the large portion which will come out will call it as flake and this is in total a stone the second thing here that is important for the notice is that this is the working age this will be the working age for the stone now when whenever a hammer strikes the pebble so this is the hammer strike right this is flake and this is the core section so whenever a hammer strikes the pebble a flake comes out the depression causes due to the strike of hammer is called as negative bulb of precursion negative bulb of percussion so 
so when the hammer strike the pebble the flick comes out the depression caused due to the strike of hammer is called as negative bulb of percussion and the corresponding elevation on the flick which is called as positive bulb of percussion every strike creates both positive and negative bulb this example of the tools we'll write down certain examples uh, relating to the tool first is chopper second is chopping tool these both will come under heavy tools then we will talk about the hand axe and cleavers hand axe and cleaver will come under core tool the next here are scrapers borers and point scrapers borer and points these three will come under flick tool and the uh, 8 9 10th the last are microlith harpoon and celt microlith harpoon and celt so these three comes now we will divide them according to the ages that they are been in practice for the most of generations so the core tools the heavy tools after that it comes the core tools core tools we call them at in a acheulean hand axe and flake tools and we put them in lower paleolithic the flick tools we put them in middle or upper paleolithic the microliths are something that we put in mesolithic period harpoons in upper paleolithic and celt in neolithic so celt will something will put in neolithic microliths in mesolithic now we will di discuss about each one of them separately and we'll draw the diagrams for most of them so we'll start with chopper chopper is simple a stone core and the area which was used for the purpose of chopping this is unifacial that only from one side it is used in chopper and the other side like this side is used for holding this was the tool practiced in paleolithic now chopping tool is similar to the chop tool but this was bifacial chopping tool so here the stone is bifacial bifacial 
same it was also in the paleolithic period chopping tools are important then comes the hand axe we'll talk about the hand axe now hand axe is something which was used as an axe but there were no handle to it so there was a stone and this was a particular section with with the help of which man was able to cut whatever he wants so this was particularly the working age the type of there were few types of hand axe right so this hand axe abevelian abevelian which were heavier in nature and acheulean acheulean which were finer in nature then there were cleavers this was the working edge and this was the holding grip or we call it as butt end the next is scraper the edge will have the retouching and secondary flaking flicks or secondary flicking is seen here so we'll try to draw a diagram a stone this will be the working edge <coughs> borer now we'll talk about the borer the working edge on both side merge and not to the extent it becomes a point so basically borer is something that there's two working edge and they do not meet to become a point rather they there's a separation the next is harpoon they are bone tools used for fishing mainly found in the upper paleolithic time so they were basically used for fishing So these were the harpoons, celts, which was used in Neolithic period, and this was used in agriculture. Now, in the next video, we will be discussing separately about Lower Paleolithic, Upper Middle Paleolithic, and Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Chalcolithic, and so on. So thank you. Thank you for watching the first video. I hope you subscribe to the channel if not yet and uh, have a great time ahead. Thank you.